I didn't film the construction of the second box because it was largely the first box, just with less screw ups. But I thought I'd give you a quick show of the things I did differently before I pull this apart. So the first thing I did differently was I glued the base and the sides as one piece. I used five clamps to make sure that I didn't have that gapping that was there last time. I also actually got the splines in the right place. I put the wedge in and it was leaning over this way a bit. So with the clamps along the bottom, I was able to put a piece along the top and a clamp on either side to pull it down and pull it into square. And then I press fit the back into place. It wasn't glued in, it was just enough to help keep the back in square and that was the front in square. Once the sides were dry, I pulled those off and took the back off and glued it into place. And then as you can see, I've clamped it. By having two separate glue ups, one with just the sides and one with the back, I was able to make sure everything was pulled really nice and tight. And I think it's gonna come out a lot better this time. Is it really a project if you don't make a whole lot of mess? I think not. Working on a project and making a mess is the closest that grown-ups tend to get to being able to play in the sandbox or playing in mud puddles. I used almost all of my felt padding on the last box that didn't work. So I'm gonna have to cut this up into four pieces and hope that it's enough. I could cut them up into squares and sped, spread them out. Yes, I think I'm gonna do that. Unfortunately, my car's not working right now, so I can't just run out to the hardware store. These are about a quarter of the size of, whoop, of what I used on the other box, but I'm hoping I can spread them out more often and still be okay. This is one of those tapes that's supposed to auto lock. It's supposed to pull out and just hold there until you press the button and it pulls in. It just falls back in and it's like a year old. I'm not very impressed. Okay. Hopefully now with sufficiently less floor destroying action, Actually feels kind of nice. All right, cross your fingers for me. I should mention, I made this three millimeters bigger, not just two. I want it to be tight, but I figured if it's a little loose, I can use some of these plastic sheets to fill it out. I also raised this 10 millimeters. If this works, I'll put the dimensions up in the description. All right. Come on, please work. I don't want to do this a third time. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh, that was perfect. <laughs> Woo! She worked. Let me show you. Look at that. There's no space at all. That was perfect. Oh yeah. Okay, now to put the rest of it together. Oh, oh, like a glove. You know what? I could have probably done one millimeter. I see a little air gap in here. Not at the back. So I think it's just that the top is splaying out. So I'm actually going to take that back. No, leave it at three millimeters. Yeah, the gap is getting bigger as I move out. I think it's because this here is pulling out some. I noticed that when I was waiting for the glue to dry. Oh, well, I checked it and the depth was good enough, so it should still be fine. Oh, it's gonna have my, it's going to have, I'm going to have my desk back soon. Yes. Yeah, I think the gap down here is tight. Yeah, the gap is just up here, so that's just because this, uh, this wall has to get pulled in some. Right. Here's the divider. This looks so close. I mean, I did my math. It should be fitting. Final test. Oh yeah, we're grand. <laughs> ah, okay.
Okay, this is so much better. Oh, look how much more space efficient this is. Yes, it's wider than the previous one. You know what? I'm gonna go get the other one so you can see side by side comparison. So the old depth was 123 centimeters, roughly. The new depth is 80 centimeters. The width, 305 millimeters by 33, or 330. 330 versus 305. Obviously the top is not on it, but I think it was about 320 by about 250 millimeters. This thing is smaller in every dimension except for width, and it's only slightly wider. Doesn't require the fancy cabling to get both posts to the front. Yeah, this is good. This is very good. Ah, this makes me happy. We're gonna cut down to this line. That line is the top of the battery. So I'm actually gonna groove out about halfway down. So I'm gonna use this as the center for the hole. And I have to come in 38 centimeters. 38 millimeters. Very big difference. And that's where I want my two holes. Now the wire with the insulation is one centimeter. One centimeter is less than half an inch. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of play. So I may look for a half inch. No, let's go a bit bigger than that. Let's go five eighths. I don't want the wire rubbing against anything. You certainly don't need a pillar drill or drill press or whatever you want to call it. Where's my chuck? Where's my key? There it is. But if you have one, it makes it a lot easier to get your holes straight up and down. That's good. These bits, focus, have a thread on them. So when they grab the wood, they're gonna to wanna to pull the wood up. Because of that, even though it's not a big deal, I like being a little bit safe. I've had pieces jump out on me before. So I'm gonna clamp it, not to really keep it from moving, just to keep it down on the table. It's one of those times you wish you had an extra hand. Hold that there. Now the drill can be my third hand. That was really wobbly. I'm gonna back this off and tighten it back up. No, oh, I must have bent it. It's a little wobbly. All right. Well, who cares? What I'm seeing is when it spins, I'm seeing the bottom do that. It's plywood. I'm not worried. That's what I mean by sucking it up. So even with this clamp, it's too far forward. It was still able to lift it. So now I'm grabbing it and clamping it with back here. Now a trick to get less blowout I don't know if the shadow's letting you see that, but I stopped short. Once the bit stuck out the back, I'm gonna turn it over and now come in this way. These spade bits have blades on the edge. Focus, there we go. They have blades on the edge, which cut the grain so that it doesn't tear out as much. Oh, Bosch, you make only the highest quality tools. There, nice clean hole. I'm not using the clamp anymore. It didn't help to jump and it just slowed me down. Fuck. Pardon my language. And draw a line on it. This would be really easy, but I do not have one. So I just drew a line to follow as I cut. To continue the idea that this is practice, I'm going to follow my line across the top just so that when I put the blade down, I don't go off kilter. Things you know you're going to throw away that are only going to be short-lived are the very best things to practice getting better on. And just like that. I love these saws. Here we go. And now, we have lots of space 
for our wires. So I drew a line showing where the board was when the batteries were installed. And while I have no batteries here, I want to use this opportunity to figure out where I'm gonna place everything. Spoiler alert, I'm switching to the JKBMS that Andy is so fond of. My thinking is, what's the point of having multiple YouTube channels where each channel focuses on something if you're not going to learn from them? He had a video come out today where he was talking about how these are much nicer, how they've got really stout MOSFETs, transistors in them, the way they do the recharging, just everything about them is better. So with that in mind, this is what I'm going to plan to use. So the major components I have to install, being mindful of the wires, is the battery switch, which I may put upside down like this. So the positive is going to have to come out into a few. So if I can get that, ugh, I'd rather it be actually center line if I'm going to put it here. If I put it here, that's not going to have a lot of space. If I put it down here, that gives me lots of working space. If I put this right here, now that's going to run. Okay. So to system minus to battery minus. Okay, so this now, B minus, P minus. I think B minus is battery minus. Okay, so I don't remember if B minus goes to the battery and P minus goes to the shunt. I should look that up. Mount this like this. Now it's flush like that. It's gonna foul with this. So if I bring this halfway down, now I have more room to work with. I'm gonna look up the outputs. I can't find the manual in English. I think I remember Andy talking about that problem. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna find Andy's video where he first talks about the JK and let his video be my manual. To get our B minus here to the battery negative terminal, goes to the XT60 connector and up to the- uh, Okay, so B minus is battery minus. Terminal. All right, so B minus goes directly to the battery. So this is gonna go to the battery negative. That means I want this side to come over to here. So battery to blue wire, black wire to smart, smart, smart shunt, smart shunt out to the Anderson connector. So I think if I mount this here, what I don't want is this to be scraping against this over time. So I want to make sure this is low enough down that any little vibration won't cause any friction against the brass. I'm pretty confident with where this is now. Oh, haha! These here stick out some and then those wires come out. So I need to keep this back a fair ways. So ignore that one. That was the mistake. That's where I'm going to put the two holes. So that's the 35 millimeter set back line. My first hole is going to be here. 101 millimeters, which is right there. If you recall, these are what we're using. So I need to know the outside dimension of this. That's too big. That's too small. Ratio. So we'll use the quarter inch because that's the closest. Is it overkill to use a pillar drill for this? Yes. Do I care? No. I like my tools. I like using them. This is definitely awkward as hell. A regular drill would have been so much easier. Okay, yeah, this is just silly now.
Maddie, you are clumsy. Please stop being so clumsy. Oh, it's too far forward. It's way too far forward. This here is going to foul with the face. Son of a... All right, let's rethink this. Let's rethink this. I measured off the long... I measured off the, the circle I drew that was wrong. The one I said not to use. Just in case anyone was of the... Uh, mind that I actually know more than I do and I'm just pretending. <laughs> nope. 42 millimeters. Okay, let's try this again. But I'm going to do something different this time. Instead of going straight to the size of drill that I want, I'm going to use a small little pilot hole bit. Bring it down a bit further and come down to 50. Okay. Let's try this again. All right. Let's see if it works better this time. All right. That's going to work. Last time I left these sitting on top of the board. For the finished one, I'm going to actually want to recess this and set it in so that this is flush. So I'm going to figure out how to recess this. Now, the ideal thing would be to have a Forstner bit and just touch it off to dig out about a millimeter of material. I don't have a Forstner bit. It's left a scratch mark, so I know where it's centered. So there's the hole. You can see, I'll highlight it, the scratch mark made when I was spinning the bit. So I'm going to center off that. Doesn't have to be accurate, just kind of close. That's about two centimeters by about two centimeters. So all I'm doing now with the knife is just cutting the grain. So when I chisel, I don't get tear out. Okay. Absolutely overkill, which is the best kind. I always start both of them loose. Because if you tighten one up and it brings it right down the center and the other one was off to the edge, now you're fighting it a lot more. If one is off from the other and they're both floppy, you can split the difference between them. Better chance of getting it to sit nicely. back of the line. This is, oh, I wish this was actually back some more. Okay, future note, plus 10 millimeter length. That is one of the first lessons to come out of this. Little bit of the screw sticking out, nothing serious. How flush it is matters to me because I'm going to have two or three of these side by side in the engine bay. And when I try to slide one out, I don't want it catching on anything and scraping up the battery as I pull it out. I love this bench so much. Ah! I cannot explain in words how much I love this bench. When I move on the boat, when I move on the boat, the only material possession I have that I'm worried about what I'm going to do with is this bench. I put so much time and effort and energy into building this. 
and it was my first major project, period, but also the first one with my teacher. The problem I'm having is that this here is now just barely behind what will be the face of the battery, but the wire that comes out comes out at an angle, so it's going to foul against the front of this box. I got it forward too much. I should have brought it back another few millimeters. That would have given me the clearance I need. Well, in any case, all of this is a huge fight, and for what? A centimeter, 10 millimeters would give me so much more room to work with. So the next thing now is to mount the BMS. Now, I know I want it face down because these leads are short enough as they are, and all of my BMS leads are gonna come out this way. I put it down like that. These wires are so short. Andy was complaining about that and I get it. Ideally, I'd like to have the battery switch center mounted. But yeah, that's, I can't put this in front. If this was a centimeter longer, I could have done it. Hmm. If I bring this over now, because I need room somewhere to put the fuse. So I should bias this over to the left. I'm just gonna have to accept that that's off to the side like this. And that's just the way it is. Okay, I accept that the switch is coming down here. How am I gonna hold this onto this? That is another question. I have to be mindful of the fact that directly on the other side of this is the batteries. So I don't wanna put, thank you, any screws or anything through this that could potentially scrape the side of the battery. That could be a very bad day. So I think what I need to do, build a little wooden mount. I could have something that could drop in like this, and then this whole thing can just lift straight out. It's gonna come like that to the battery negative. These will probably be two ring terminals bolted together like I did with the fuse. And then. I'm gonna have a jumper like this to get over from here to here. And then I have to come off like this over to the Anderson connector. And somewhere in all of this, I have to mount the fuse. So that's gonna come in like this. The further over I can make this, do that. And then this goes into the battery. If I mount this sideways, that. Actually, if I go like this, could I drop this straight down into the back of that? Make that a lot shorter. So if I mount it like this, I drop, yeah, I could drop that straight into here if this is off to this side, and then come off here and drop in the top and just have it loop up. That would let me bring the BMS to be right in the center and open up a lot of this space. Yes, okay, I think we just figured it out. I think we just figured it out. Okay, the BMS is gonna be mounted dead center. All right, now we can make some progress. So 298 is 149. And I wanna do, it was 101. Let's do 51 millimeters on either side. Now, before I draw that out, let's see if that's actually Yep, that looks right. How tall is it? 162. So there's the BMS footprint. And that's where the wires are. So now I have to think, how am I going to fix this in place while still letting it be removable. I could make a couple little wooden tabs that grab the bottom. So how thick did I say this was? 16 millimeters thick. I want to relieve this area and this will be the lip that grabs over it. I don't need much of a lip. I'm freehanding it at this point because I don't know if this is going to work and I just want to give it a rough idea or a rough test. I think what I'll do to get a bit of a round, 
on that corner so it doesn't have a place that's easy to break is I'm going to use the drill, drill a hole and the pillar drill straight through and then I'll cut in and cut in. Where's my one eighth? Yeah, I'm going to try this with the one eighth. The nice thing about one eighths is that they're really, really, really common size. So when you inevitably break them and you go to the hardware store, every hardware store is going to have singles of one eighth inch drill bits, at least here in North America and Imperial land. Deflected a little bit there, but that's okay for what this is. It's just a test. So one of the reasons I want to practice with this isn't just that I like making my life difficult. Um, when I'm on the boat, obviously it's going to be very much an electric boat and I should have lots of electric power, but I want to be able to fix things when things are broken. I mean, <laughs> kind of what it says on the tin, and that could be my power system. So I'm trying to get practice with the saw to get clean cuts and whatnot, so that if I ever have to fix something on the boat and I don't have power, I'm not fighting trying to learn then. I'm not very good at keeping my cuts straight and level. And, well, practice. Yep, see, I got... Let me show you what I mean. This is what I'm trying to practice. So despite trying to be as straight as I can, you can see how I drifted that way towards the back. This is the kind of stuff I'm trying to get better at. So now the question becomes, can I correct this? Ha! Ah, that worked! I used my finger to keep this from falling back into the existing cut. And that worked! Okay, that's well past what I'm actually going to keep. Ah! Okay, so here's another thing I'm trying to work on. So that side was pretty straight. That side walked off. <sighs> I will try to clean that up with a plane afterwards. This is my gluing surface. I think I want about that much. There we go. Pretty? Nope. Functional? I don't know. Guess we'll see. All right, let's split this in twain. Only the highest quality tools. I'm rounding the edges because I'm imagining this slotting in and I want to have soft edges to catch it and guide it into the slot. So the idea, if this is going to work, is to glue these two pieces like so. With these fixed in place, this will be able to be pulled out, but when it goes in, it'll be held in place. Despite the fact that I was using the clamp very recently, I can't find it. I swear this could be the theme of my life. Maddie loses things. I would never do this with nice wood. Yeah, that'll work. The mess it made. Oh well, too late now. I'll sand it off if it really bothers me afterwards. Making sure as I bring it home I don't shift it. Another example of why woodworkers are always hoarding clamps. There! So there's the L brackets. I'm not... Oh, right, I forgot. I put that there for a reason. That's going to slot in like that. All right, so I don't think it's been long enough to say that the glue has actually set, but I think it's enough that I can take the clamps off. When it's actually set, I'll uh, sand that to clean it up a little bit. Go me! Let's see if we can test fit it. Yeah, it's tight. I just said that I wasn't going to mess with this, and here I am messing with this. And if I break this, I'm leaving it in the video because I know I shouldn't be mucking with it while the glue is still setting up, but here we go. That side's okay. This side is tight. There! That's already pretty skookum. That might be enough. Do I really need to do something up here, I wonder? I suppose I probably should. Oh, I'm so happy with that. If I take this and I put a couple of stops on either side, that would 
That would do nicely. That would do very nicely. I've cut out a couple of little blocks. I'm going to get ready to glue them in. I'm using that board to press down on those two little pegs. They're on nice and stout now. Bean soup before you can switch to grown ups apples juice. Let's see if this fits. Okay, that works surprisingly well. And you can see I'm holding it upside down and it's not moving. When I do the finished box, one thing I was thinking of doing is making a little piece of wood that slides, like a little catch that I could pull back. Anyways, so the last thing I want to do now is when this was in, it's really hard to pull it out. I'm not going to be able to tilt this back like I've been doing up until now when the batteries are in place. I'm gonna have to lift it right up and you can see how much that's fighting me. What I'm going to do, if I can get it back out again, just, you know, illustrating my point, is cut a little handle into this so I can actually get my fingers through it and pull it up. So I know the bottom of the batteries are about here roughly. I wanna leave a bit of wood up here. Actually, here's a question, how big are my fingers? All right, I'm gonna want about a two centimeter hole. I wanna keep as much space up as I possibly can. Now, how wide do I wanna make it? 80 millimeters should do. Actually, you know what, let's make it 100. So I'm gonna drill two holes on either side here and then I will cut out the space here. Actually, I don't have a saw small enough to get in there. So what I might do is just do a bunch of plunge cuts and then chisel it out. I like chiseling, it's fun. And now, of course, I'm going to be trying to, okay, uh, you know what I can do? I will drill pilot holes and then I'll flip it over and I can put it down like that and drill like this. Actually, what I'm gonna do is, before I lose my center line, I'll drill the two outside edges. Now that I've got this line, I can come along and punch along. I don't like that threaded insert. I really don't. Uh, I think I'm gonna ask Santa Claus for Forstner bits for Christmas. This is silly. Wow, I do not like these bits. Sorry, Bosch, they suck. Okay, so that just happened. Fuck. All right, this was a part when I bought this thing. I have to remember how to reassemble. Oh man, what a job it did. Okay, I'm not using this anymore today because yeah, Forstner bits, that's what I should be using. This is clearly not, oh man, look at the mess it made. Oh well. Prototyping. Now I know to use a Forstner bit when I do my finished one. You know, I'm gonna record trying to put this together because watching me flail about is probably going to be entertaining. If I remember right, I literally just jammed it up there and that was enough. Yeah, feels like it's in there again. Yeah, it's pulling down on this. Yeah, it's back in there again. I'm just going to chisel this out. This is silly. Okay, I don't want to hurt my bench top, so I need a piece of sacrificial wood. Let's see how well I can salvage this. You're normally supposed to sneak up on a line when you're chiseling. You don't go straight to the line. But I'm in a bit of annoyed mood right now and I no longer care. I just want to be able to lift this thing out. I already know that I have to do this with Forstner bits. I'm being very mindful of where my hand is relative to this. If I slip, hopefully I won't end up in emergency. There. 
I'm not entirely convinced that's strong enough to lift this out by, but it will be when it's made out of a harder wood. Let's test it just the same. Oh, that actually works perfectly well. Sweet. Hoo hoo. Victory from the jaws of defeat. Okay, let's mount the BMS for the first time. There we go. The line, these temperature sensors can go through there. The BMS wires will go through there. And when the top comes down, it'll sit flush over top. The wires will come through here. And when I'm ready to remove it, oh yeah, that's actually really nice. Okay, I'm happy again. I was not happy for a bit there. Okay, I still have to make the top and the face. Should I do that now? Yes, I might as well do that now. Why would I wait? You've seen me cut enough wood now. I'm just gonna go cut the top. You saw it anyway earlier when I made the one that didn't work. Once I've got the top cut <clears throat> and the face cut, I'm going to need to drill the holes for the inserts. There's a big void in here, which make it, is going to make it hard to sink the bolt in. This whole piece is coming apart. <sighs> Shit. I'm getting so tired of this. <sighs> okay, whatever. It is what it is. Getting mad fixes nothing. All right, I'm scabbing another piece in. So what I'm gonna do is cut this piece out, glue a new piece in. Yeet! So what I need to do now is to get this to sit in flush. Never cut towards yourself, you know? getting there. Deep breath. Deep breath. There's times when a project isn't fun and there's nothing you can do about it except keep pushing. Okay, good enough for my purposes. Ever have one of those days? I just spent a lot of time explaining how I was doing this glue up and I didn't have the camera turned on. I have pieces of paper to make sure that these wedges don't glue onto the main board and they're clamped like this to make sure that this scarf piece isn't out of kilter. I clamped this on first, then I clamped the bar onto the back and then to squeeze down, I have that one. Pinch your head, pinch your head, pinching the board down. Okay, so as I look at this, you can see the bit of the shadow there that didn't line up perfectly. It's kicked out a little bit. That's good. Good enough for this job. The reward for all that effort is that we get to try to sink that over here again.
There we go. Finally.